arrives within the first 30 seconds or so after the round has started. So I'm expecting him to to come onto the stage any moment. Uh, now, I don't know if we'll wait for him. We'll see at the bottom there, our tournament. He's both the tournament arbiter and tournament doctor, Alex. So he's got a, a busy, a busy few weeks here. And I think on the left hand side, I think that was Archon Erigaisi we just saw arrive. He is, of course, uh, currently not just leading the challenges, but absolutely crushing it. Archon is such a beast. I, and, you know, he's having a phenomenal performance, but I'm just not surprised. And there he is, the man himself. You know, you don't want that awkward board for a minute having to chat to your opponent. This is the way to do it. You sit down, you press your opponent's clock, uh, all within five seconds. And it's, uh, it's incredible. All the opponents, I don't know if this started as a trend and if one player is copying the other or if they all want to show that respect. But every day, Magnus, or almost every day, has been, you know, just that one minute late. But uh, the opponents have pretty much never uh, started the clock. But Magnus, he came, sat down, pressed the clock, and uh, Pride has just made the move one more. A terrible blunder here by my friend. Uh, I think he can make it through his life. I mean, this is this is a decisive mistake. You know, there's really nothing else to commentate. <laughs> we see Magnus. But I don't know if registered with him yet the board uh, has appeared on the board. Yeah, well, what anyway? <laughs> Alright, man, I haven't played chess today. Uh, Alright, all right, I guess I'll figure something out. The players, of course, still have two rounds to go on to the next rest day. We saw Magnus lead the communication. He also is a man of routine. Usually he comes and starts the clock, writes down the players' names, and then um, usually we'll see him adjust all the pieces before making Absolutely no hurry. There's a very generous time control. Magnus is really not known to get into severe time pressure, and even if he does, he's particularly perturbed. Uh, I am curious to see what kind of approach he's going to take. Obviously, I think he's playing for the win. Uh, you know, he's not going to play something that even allows a, a either a force draw or a line that really simplifies the position. But to, how extreme is he going to go? Is he going to go King C D Finale, or is he going to go? Yeah, he's gonna need five, so a more solid approach on the one. Uh, I think that yeah, he will not take any crazy risks. I think very often what they say the youngsters he wants to play them uh, in the end game, but I don't know, Craig he isn't just here, you run at the mill a uh, young kid who is clueless about it. Not at all, I've had the pleasure of training with Craig uh, for a couple of sessions. Let me tell you, he is a calculating beast. He's got tons and tons of knowledge. He's got a vast memory of games, and that bodes very well for his positional understanding as well. He's got no clear weaknesses, and that, of course, is Fiona the new.
end, White Black's gonna take the bishop on b2, and that pawn's gonna promote, so it's over. That's yeah. also dead. Queen b5, uh, Prague, what he took, he exchanged. So, Knight queen. takes, he's going to resign here because Knight takes a7, c takes b2, and Knight c3 is unstoppable. Yeah, I so. think we are seeing the final moments here of the game. Uh, Prague took on a7, Magnus taking on b2, and yeah. Rook b1, rook b2 is, might be thrown in, rook b1, rook b2, and then knight c3. So, rook b2. Yeah, and there he goes, rook e2 is on the board, and will probably uh, see a hand check. Yeah, I mean, White can also try knight d4, and Magnus can even go knight c3 in this position, just showcasing total domination, knight takes e2, knight takes e1, and the knight calmly steps back. Wow, Actually, what a time scramble, what a play by Magnus, so accurate. Magnus is such a, a beast, you let him back in, and there is the resignation by Pragnananda, and th some visible relief on the face of Magnus Carson. Relief, but also we see this quite That's often. A classic I think. Magnus. Magnus is not That's completely a classic Magnus thing. satisfied with the game he played. Was he maybe apologizing for pressing the clock? <laughs> I don't know. Or like, I don't know what that means. But I've seen Magnus do that before. Yeah, I think very often it's a, a little bit of frustration of him not being too satisfied maybe with the way he handled the opening, or I don't know, maybe he's pointing out knight g5. But uh, well, sure I'm curious. He is. 